Yo, what's going on guys, it's Anime One back here with a new video and today I'm here with a new part of what if Naruto was neglected and trained by Shanks. So if you guys like the content on the channel, please subscribe to the channel and while you're at it, also like this video. I'll also try to get this video to 20 likes uh, for the next part to be uploaded as soon as possible. So yeah, without any delay, let's begin the video. Okage's office. Minato was already tired from all of his early paperwork, which had now increased due to the actions of Team Eleven. Your mission was to capture Tora and, re and return it to the white Daimyo's wife. Care to explain what went wrong? Minato asked, waiting for an explanation. They We returned the cat, and I don't see what's the big deal, stated Naruto, with both of his teammates nodding in agreement. Itachi, Itachi put his face in his hand out of embarrassment. Minato's eyes twitched violently. The big deal is that when the cat was returned, Tora had half of his tail cut off and characterized by a fire jutsu. The cat is also suffering from a post-traumatic disorder stress due to Gendu to placed on it. I would say all of this is a big deal, Minato said. I am tempted to assign you to 20 more D-rank missions without a pay, he said getting a gloomy re-looks from the team. Naruto was more annoyed than gloomy, he hated this. He wanted to fight, he wanted a challenge. Something most certainly that was not he was not getting from this ridiculous d-rank mission the only one thing more annoying to him than the d-rank mission was the fact that the hokage and his wife had taken to trying to get him to return to home when the sanin had attempted to get on his good side of offering him training and summoning contracts acting like the neglect and yet suffer from them didn't exist it made him sick and Itachi had suggested that he give Minato and Kushin a chance, which Naruto had promised that he would only think about it. it was not something that he was sure that he would do. Lately, he was, he has been thinking about reconciling with his parents. He knew it would take time, but he was slowly becoming more open to the idea as long as they didn't uh, they stopped annoying him with questions like, "How are you? Are you eating your vegetables? Are you going to sleep on proper timing?" And Naruto pushed uh, this thought out of his mind uh, to the side as he saw uh, uh, Samantha ranting about something so she decided he decided to tune in it's I think it's time that we get something worth our time we are the strongest gaining team you have got you know and you only give us something that will be a challenge Samantha said F Samantha said before earning a punch from the head and to the head from Itachi Itachi had watched his little sister grow his brother was pretty much the same, uh, except that Sasuke was a little more open and was less arrogant. But Samantha, well, she was very less timid before. She was very timid before. She rarely talked to any other people because of, well, her dad uh, was not really kind to her. He belittled her every chance that he got. But, well, Itachi was glad that she was opening up. And he guessed it was because of Naruto. He had noticed and sometimes saw that Naruto and Samantha would trade together. Specifically, it would be a one-sided fight between Naruto and Samantha, which Naruto which would win 100% of the time. So, Itachi was just, you know, happy that his sister had found someone that could relate to her. And he was really happy about that. Minato uh, contemplated on... Um, Samantha's idea and looked at Itachi. Itachi, do you believe your team is ready for a C-rank mission? Minato asked, gaining an immediate response and, and a nod. Very well, I will I will have a escort mission for from a base builder to the wave country. If that satisfies, I am confident that you will be able to handle any mission. And do you have Itachi with you, so it should be fine. He said uh, before Itachi nodded. Yeah, I think that would be great, Lord Hokage. Itachi said as Minato nodded. Soon, Minato spoke. Good. Anbu, bring Tazuna in. Moments later, obviously a drunk old man entered the room stumbling a bit. So, this is what I get for all the money I'm paying? A couple of brats and a, well, a sort of elder brat? He said causing Team Eleven to unconsciously take a small amount of killing intent directed at the old man. Before it could go any further, Minato intervened. Tazuna, I assure that this getting team is more than enough uh, 
to get you to the Lavave village without any hinge. And just so you know, Itachi is one of the strongest uh, people in the village. He said, pointing towards Itachi, who just turned to his team. Well, I want each of you to pack for a C-rank mission and meet at the place at the gate in an hour. Okay, he said, as uh, Itachi, as all the guineas nodded. Soon, all the guineas nodded and sauntering out of the office. One hour later, Naruto was seen at the entrance by himself, just, well, just leaning against the wall looking out in the distance, like he was gaining energy for this mission. He heard the uh, footsteps coming towards him as he turned his head to see the Uchiha family walking up to the gate. Well, hello there, little Naruto. Are you ready for the mission? Mikoto asked. Naruto nodded his head as he continued to look outside. The elder Uchiha looked at Naruto. So, Naruto, I've heard about you from Itachi. You're quite a prodigy, aren't you? She said. Naruto just looked at her. No, I actually am not. My teacher was just a good man. He taught me a lot as in a really short period of time. It was because of his teachings that I'm as strong as I am right now, Naruto said. As she looked at him and smiled. <laughs> That's impressive, Naruto. Naruto saw Samantha coming right behind Mikoto as he sat beside him. Mikoto smirked. You, see, you two seem awfully close, she teased. Naruto and Samantha looked at each other in confusion before realizing what she had said, and turning the other way blushing. I don't know what you mean, they said simultaneously. The old elder Uchiha smiled. Of course you do, you don't. And Naruto, the blonde or the red hair looked up at her. My name is Mikoto, but you can call me Mikoto-chan and... Know that no matter what or whatever you may feel uh, about me from the past, just know that I am always here to help you. Naruto's eyes widened. Uh, th thank you, Uchi. Okay, Mikoto-san. Mikoto smiled. It was a progress. What the Hokage family failed to remember is that they already pushed Naruto away. He was his own person now. But they also forgot to give him a choice of coming on his home, uh, coming to home on his own, not forcing him by letting him be alone for a while. Also, leaving the door uh, open to him while giving him the miss, uh, you know, support that he needed, showing that they care about him and respected his choices as well. Mikoto may not have been there for Naruto in the past, but now she wants to let him know that she will be there for anything, despite what her clan might think. But maybe in the future you may call me... Ah, Mikoto Kasan. In the future, maybe because of a certain in-law. She said before both kids blushed like tomatoes. It was a side that was that... Itachi and uh, Sasuke had come to look at, and they both, you know, smirked. She, uh, and they both smirked. So Sasuke knew that, you know, uh, Samantha had a little thing for Nort so, uh, during this past uh, month or so that they had been training and whatnot. And he knew Nort so deep, deep down actually cared for his uh, Uchiha teammate. And it's his job to make to be their uh, matchmaker. How may how you may ask? The Uchiha clan member rushed towards their te teammate and got behind them. You two little birds are extremely well, what can I say? Cute, I guess? Sasuke said. My goodness, enough! Samantha said, having enough of the embarrassment for today. She stormed away from Naruto. As Itachi looked at Sasuke and patted his shoulder. Alright, just keep on pressuring them now and they'll break by the end of this mission. And Sasuke smiled evilly. Oh, I count on it, he said. While Naruto and Sasuke were keeping a lookout for any bandits, um, Samantha was looking around and taking in the scenery of the forest outside of Konoha. So this is what it feels like to be outside of Konoha. I like it, Samantha said as she turned her attention towards Tazina, who seemed to be very nervous. So, Tazina, what's Wave like? She asked, trying to calm him down. It seemed to work as Tazina thought about it for a moment before speaking. Wave used to be beautiful, people were happy, 
and everyone took great care of each other. And it was perfect, until Gato showed up. Gato is the head of the Gato Shipping Company, so he quickly commanded authority over us and because we needed to cease to survive, but Gato came in and started bleeding us dry. We were so scared until Kaiza, the village hero, stood up to Gato, and Gato had him executed in front of everyone to make an example out of what had happened when someone defined him. Now, after all that, our village lost hope, but this bridge and building will make it so that we are forced to rely on Gato and bring hope to our people, he said with determination, and that surprised Team Eleven, instead of Hitachi, who narrowed his eyes. Gato Corporation, he says. If what he's saying is true. Hitachi was thinking, but he noticed something, and so did Naruto. There was a puddle. A puddle? Naruto thought as he looked up in the air. That puddle has chakra. Which should not be the case, and it has not rained for over two weeks. In that case, Naruto thought as he looked at Itachi, who nodded at him. He knew Naruto had observation hockey, so he could obviously sense those two uh, that were in the puddle. Itachi told Naruto to not make any kind of moves, at least until they know what they're after. As Naruto and the rest walked past the puddle, the two demon brothers came out and rushed towards Itachi and caught Itachi in between their chains and ripped him to shreds. Brother, both Sasuke and Samantha said, but the shock was too much. Both of the uh, demon brothers went towards Tazuna next, but they both were knocked out. <laughs> Itachi said as he jumped down the tree as he saw Naruto looking glaring at the two demon brothers. One of them was knocked out and the other one was barely hanging on to the consciousness. So that's Congress Haki. Said Itachi as Naruto nodded. Yeah, Shanks taught me about it. And I've learned the basics of coding, but I'm not so good at it. Naruto said, but he looked at Tazuna. As he released a bit of his Congress Haki. Just enough to intimidate uh, the old fart. Now, would you, would you mind telling us the truth about this mission ranking? Gah. Tazuna. As Naruto said that, Tazuna started to sweat. Well, um, um, Tazuna said as he bowed down. Come on, I already told you everything. I'm pretty sure you must have figured it out. Said Tazuna as you had told him the story about the wave and Gato and whatnot. Itachi nodded. Yeah, I pretty much figured it out. Gato is a really wealthy man. So I think he used this opportunity to hire this ninjas in order to assassinate you. This is not right. This mission is well of B rank. <sighs> but you're in luck. Me and my team can handle it. Said Itachi as he smiled at Tazuna. Tazuna looked up at him. Really? He said. Itachi nodded. Yeah, me and my team can handle it. I am one of the strongest in the village and my team, well, this red haired boy you see, Itachi said, patting Naruto on the head. Naruto glared up at his sensei, but he just smiled at him. Well, he's one of the strongest, he's almost on my level, so you don't have to worry about it. Two Joni level people are here to, well, assist you, so. Well, and we also have two of my little cute siblings here, Itachi said, pointing towards Samantha and Sasuke, who were dumbstruck that, what, well, like, they couldn't process what was happening, right? The thousand others started to tear up. Th thank you, he said, as they all smiled. No, don't sweat it, old man. It's our duty, said Naruto, as they all started to walk again. It's been an hour since the four or five had gotten off the boat and got closer to them to the wave, and the team was now bored. Luckily, they were almost there, according to Tazuna. So bored. When are we gonna get some action? Yell Sasuke before the team heard a buzzing sound. Immediately, Team 11 and Tazuna, thanks to, well, uh, Samantha being there, dropped to the ground before a, lion, a giant sword could decapitate them and flew into the tree. Naruto getting up and turned to Sasuke and Samantha as he looked at both of them. You both stay put. Itachi-sensei, do you mind if I handle this? 
Naruto said with a smirk as Itachi looked at him. Do you know him? Yeah, I know him quite well. Naruto said as Zabuza looked down. Well, 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 who is it now? <laughs> Itachi Uchiha and you. Uh, Zabuza said as he looked down at Naruto. <laughs> Red Hair's apprentice. <laughs> if that bastard was here, I would have probably left this mission. There was no way that I could face him. But you, on the other hand, are a completely different case. I have fought you two years ago, and you were just a little chump. What makes you think that you'll make any difference now? Naruto the smart. Is that so, Zabuza? Naruto said as he started to unsheathe his griffin. And let's see what will happen now. Zabuza recognized the sword that Naruto was unsheathing. Ah, the red hair passed the sword down to you. That means he's dead, isn't he? Zabuza said. As Naruto looked up at him without answering his question. <laughs> well, this will make things much more easier for me. Zabuza said as he vanished in his son's twin and appeared in front of Naruto. Swinging his blade as his blade was really close to Naruto's neck. A wave of conqueror's hockey went towards Zabuza as he was forced to jump back. <laughs> the spirit of the king. Who would have thought that you of all people would have it? How much have this, has this brat grown in these two years? Zabuza thought looking at Naruto. He saw a silhouette of Shanks behind him. I'm feeling uneasy, that's for sure. And that conquest hockey sure was something. Zabuza thought in his mind. As Naruto's blade started to turn pitch black, as black and red lightning surrounded it, Zabuza's eyes widened as he saw that. He already knows coding as well. This might be a bit of trouble. Not to mention, Itachi Uchiha is also there. Handling these two at the same time is not something that I'm capable of. Zabuza thought as he looked at Naruto. He, he had defeated Naruto with relative ease two years ago, but he knew when someone had mastered advanced conquerors hockey and well armament hockey and any kind of hockey in general they were a feared opponent and right naruto right now is proving so he was seeing a silhouette of the red hair red hair shanks behind naruto naruto vanished in a flash and appeared in front of zabuza he was forced to bling his blade up and uh Block Naruto's strike, but to his shock, what? Zabuza thought, as Naruto's blade was slicing through Zabuza's. This can't be happening, Zabuza thought, as he was forced to jump back as he went through handshine. Water style. Water vortex jutsu, Zabuza said, as he sent a huge water vortex towards Naruto, who and got his sword in a weird position, as Naruto spoke out some words. Divine departure. As Naruto said that, he rushed towards the whole huge water vortex, and to Zabuza's utter shock and horror, Naruto sliced the water vortex in half. As a wave of conqueror's hockey, a slash went towards Zabuza, who could not dodge in time as he was sent flying. As the sword of waves slammed into him, Zabuza was sent crashing through many, many trees. As he crashed into the raw rock that was there, as he was bleeding. What? The strength. It's just like. It's just like red hair. He thought as he cleansed his stomach, which is now cut up. Just in two moves. This brat, thought Zabuza as Naruto was now coming towards him. I have to get out of here, he thought, but then two Senmons slammed Zabuza's neck as Zabuza was knocked out, supposedly dead. Naruto looked upwards to see a hunter ninja wearing a well, Kiwi headband. Kiwi hunter ninja, huh? Naruto said as he still had his card up, as the hunter ninja dumbed down. I really must thank you. You have made my job much easier by getting rid of Zabuza. I'll take it from here on out, said the hunter and Naruto looked at him. 
Isn't the hunter Nantrinin supposed to dispose of the body right here and right now? Said Naruto as he narrowed his eyes at the hunter Nin behind the mask. Da now Haku was a little nervous. He saw how easily Naruto dealt with Zabuza and... To his credit, he was not stronger than Zabuza. He could be stronger than Zabuza if he trained and became ruthless, but that was not who he was as a person. And right now... This is not good, thought Haku. But then he got an idea in his head. Demonic Ice Crystal, said Haku has several like uh, Demonic Ice Crystal, the same jutsu that he used like a Naruto and Sasuke, pretty much. Naruto was surrounded in a dome of ice. Naruto looked around. What kind of trickery is this? Haku went through more hand sign. I'll get a clone in there. And then, well, I'll take Zabuza-sama with me. He thought as, well, he put the clone in the ice dome and that was now striking Naruto with Senban and whatnot. Naruto was easily able to dodge them and well, slash them in half and whatnot. As Naruto did that, he was getting frustrated. <sighs> Whatever. Naruto's sword was now surrounded in fire. Let's see how they deal with this. Said Naruto as he st uh, straightened his back. <sighs> Kamusari. Naruto said as huge wave of fire and the Conqueror's hockey was emitted from the ice dome. And well, to everyone's shock and horror, the entirety of the ice dome was broken, and it was melted off. What the, what the hell happened here? Haku thought as he got the memory of Shadow Clone back to him. This kid, he's no joke. Haku thought he was jumping from tree to tree. Soon Naruto um, reunited with his team as he looked at Itachi. They escaped, he said. Tachi looked at Naruto with a little shock. He knew Naruto was strong, but this level of strength was just ridiculous. He could even say that for right now, when I mean right now because Itachi doesn't have his mangekyo, Naruto would be even stronger than what he was. He shook his head. <laughs> Looks like we have got to most of our mission done. Well, Tazuna, let's go. He said. As the other of his teammates nodded, and soon they went towards Tazuna's house. After some walking, the group had now finally arrived at the village. It was honestly a pitiful sight. The mood was gloomy, and the people looked hopeless. There were people on the streets begging for food. Tazuna shook his head. This is the result of Kato. He simply said before, Walking to the house and sitting on a pier, the group followed Tazuna and entered the house with him. Tsunami, Neri, I'm home. Tazuna shouted. A few seconds later, a black-haired woman came running and hugged Tazuna. I thought you had died, Dad. She said with a few tears leaking. Tazuna hugged her back. <laughs> I would have if not for these remarkable ninjas. He said Naruto and... Naruto and Itachi stood indifferent. Well, Samantha was rubbing her arm and blushing from embarrassment. Sasuke was just standing tall and proud. Naruto and Samantha both didn't want to break. Sasuke down like they had at the village by remaining by reminding him that he hadn't really done anything along the way here. And Tasunami looked at the ninja and walked up to them. Thanking you, thank you for protecting my father. He and my son are all I have left, and the entirety of the wave country is relying on me. Tsunami said as Naruto gave her a small smile. Eh, it's no problem. We're more than happy to help you. He is there anywhere we can stay for the rest of the night, and because we're pretty worn out. He said got a questioning look from uh, Sasuke and Samantha. Since they had a rust, yes, since they have never seen Naruto tired, Tsunami pointed upstairs and, got and told the group that there were two rooms that they could use. After thanking with her for the hospitality, the group made their way towards the upstairs. Once they arrived upstairs, team, um, as they arrived upstairs, uh, Naruto turned to uh, Itachi, who had been silent. Ah, <sighs> well, Itachi Sensei. It's more likely than how Haku and that uh, Zabuza is gonna come back. And that the other one, I forgot about him. Eh, how could I? His name is Haku. He's an apprentice of Zabuza. 
That was that saved them, well, a few years ago, and I met him. Said Naruto as Itachi looked at him. Okay then. Naruto, would you mind telling me his abilities? He's an ice user. Ice click again Kai from the Mist Village. Said Naruto as Itachi scratched his uh, chin. Huh, an ice user, huh? Rather interesting. Naruto, I'll take care of Zabuza the next time that he comes. Can you take care of the other one? Said no, Itachi as Naruto nodded. Yeah, I was planning to do that anyways. The other two can protect the others. And well, our training is going pretty good as well. So as Sasuke and Samantha both know tree walking and water walking, I think it's about time you teach them elemental jutsus. Itachi scratched his head. Um, they both already know the fireball jutsu. Said Itachi. Naruto looked at his, uh, sensei. Well, they might know the Fireball Jutsu, but you have honestly thought that there are other chakra, they have other chakra natures as well. That fire nature might, they have just developed it through training and their prodigious levels. That they might have other chakra natures. Naruto said as Itachi looked at him. What are you implying? Naruto sighed. <sighs> when I was teaching uh, Samantha, I noticed that her fire jutsus are strong, but when she could do other kind of jutsus, like when I taught her some lightning jutsu, she caught on to them much quicker and her lightning jutsus were much stronger than the fire ones. Naruto said as Itachi looked at the boy, are you implying? Naruto nodded, yes. They both, I'm not sure about Sasuke, but Samantha definitely has lightning change and chakra nature as her natural chakra nature. As that, that was said, Itachi scratched the back of his head. Now I feel embarrassed not knowing that about my siblings. Said Itachi as Naruto nodded. Yeah, it's fine. Naruto, and also, I want to talk to you about Samantha about something. Said uh, Itachi as they both, uh, Sasuke and Samantha were in one room and Naruto and Itachi were in one room. What is it? Said Naruto as, well, Itachi looked at him. I want her to move in with you. As Itachi said that, a few seconds took to re register that in Naruto's mind. Were you at? Said Naruto. As he was looking at Itachi like as if you're serious. Itachi gave him a serious look. Yeah. I want her to move in with you. Uh, her staying at my house is not going to be the most beneficial for her growth. I want her to be happy. My mother, father and... My mother, me and Sasuke will visit her from time to time, but my father, he hates her, and because of that, well, I don't think it's good for her to stay at home. I can just not kick out my father now, can I? He's the head of the Uchiha clan. Said uh, Ita Itachi has no to just thought about it. Well, I do have an extra spare bedroom in my apartment, so I guess it's fine. Naruto said as he looked at Itachi, but... You'll have to convince her, said Naruto. Ajitati smirked. Oh, don't worry. See, I can convince her with ease. He said with a smirk as he looked at Naruto. What is that supposed to mean? Naruto said, narrowing his eyes at his sensei. Oh, nothing. You'll soon know, Itachi said. Naruto again narrowed his eyes. He's avoiding my question, Naruto thought. Soon, the whole team was, well, around the dining table. And well, uh, there was also a little boy seated at the dining table along with everyone he, he had already met. Who is the kid? Naruto asked before guessing. Never seen before. Tasunami smiled. He's my son, Inari. Inari say hi to the ninjas who helped your grandfather. Inari looked up to see Naruto slightly smiling at him. Inari frowned at him before taking his dinner, played up to his room. I'm eating upstairs, he said. Leaving the room. But in all seriousness, what is the kid's problem? Uh, asked Samantha as he looked at uh, Tasunami. As Tazuna was the one who spoke. I believe I told you about Kaiza, the hero that stood up against Gato. Said uh, Tazuna as everyone nodded. You see, that man, Ineri idolized him. And he was sort of like a father figure to him that he never had. Said Tazuna, as that made everything clear. Oh, now that makes sense. Said Naruto, as the others nodded in an agreement. It really did make sense now. Next morning, 
Team uh, 11 was now training. Naruto was on his own and, well, Itachi was training both Sasuke and Samantha since Naruto had told uh, Itachi that, you know, Samantha's natural uh, change to chakra nature was lightning. He also taste, uh, tested the same theory with Sasuke and found out that Sasuke also had lightning, changing chakra nature as his naturally born nature. So Itachi was teaching them a couple of lightning techniques, as you know, just their lightning techniques would be much more powerful than the fire ones. So he thought that he could do that. And with Naruto, Naruto was currently uh, looking at a huge cliff. And his sword was now coated in fire. And it was black as well, with red and, light, uh, red and black lightning surrounding it. Naruto immediately, in a flash, was in front of the cliff. And in a failed swoop, the entire cliff was now sliced in half. Naruto acceded Griffin as he looked at the cliff. Uh, that's good enough, I guess. Naruto said as he had, he had been working on a new move. And this one was gonna be a real nice one treat, specifically for Haku. Then the boy actually decided to fight him. Naruto sighed. Well, whatever, he thought in his mind. Soon, the team went back to Tazuna's house and, uh, well, Inari started to blabber on about, um, you know, as him being, uh, bad, that, you know, heroes don't exist, that they shouldn't, you know, try so hard for, because they're just gonna die by the hands of Gato. Naruto decided to speak up, and Naruto decided to speak up the exact words that I'm seeing right now. Ah, uh, and die by the hands of Gato. Do you know ninjas? said Naruto as he looked, Inari looked at them. Sorry to burst their bubble kid, but your father, Kaisa, was not one. If he was one, I can guarantee you that, well, Gato would not have been able to do what he did to him. He would have died since, from what I know, Gato didn't have any, uh, didn't hire ninjas at that time. So, you're trying to get what I'm trying to say. Naruto said looking at Inari. Who just gritted his teeth. No, Gato is the strongest. No one can defeat him. Sig in area, Naruto sighed. <sighs> I, had, I hate to brag about it, but the truth is, I am the son of the fourth Hokage. And, well, the fact is that if I get killed right now, Minato will pretty much hunt down Gato until he finds his dead body right at his feet, said Naruto as he looked at the three of them three of his teammates. These three are the he the children of the Uchiha clan's clan head. So, you can guess what will happen if Gato decides to kill them, said Naruto as Inari was now shutting up. Logic was more than what his emotions could say. You have to understand that normal things like this will happen from time to time, but tyrants like Gato don't worry, as soon as we get out of here, Gato's rule will be over, said Naruto as Itachi also smiled. Yeah, don't worry about it much, kid. We'll make sure that everything will be fine. Inari ran up to his room, just not wanting to hear any of this anymore. Naruto sighed as he went outside the room. Where are you going, Naruto? Samantha asked him. Naruto just looked back at her. Ah, to blow off some steam, Naruto said as... Itachi looked at her and nodded. Uh, Samantha stood up and decided to follow Naruto. As Naruto was in the rooftop, as he sensed Samantha, a man appearing beside him. You know, he's just a kid, she said. Naruto looked at her. No, it's fine that he's a kid, but he's saying this dumb stuff not knowing the suffering that others had gone through. He's lucky that he even has a mother and grandfather who love him so much. And he has food on his table, said uh, Naruto as he looked up at the moon that was shining upon the sky. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, I guess, she said, but she looked at him. Don't worry about it much. I'm pretty sure everything will be fine. After all, you're here with us, she said with a smile as Naruto looked at her. <laughs> I guess that's true. She suited her hand over his as she grasped it. Naruto looked at her. And smile. Well, well, aren't you a cheeky one? Naruto said as he looked away with embarrassment. Well, I thought you looked lonely and sad, so I thought I would comfort you, 
She said with a really cute uh, face that Naruto couldn't resist. Uh, I guess I'll accompany you then, Naruto said, as he smiled. Sure do, you bastard, she said as he laid down beside him. Naruto just hoped that things could last this, like this forever, but he knew it wouldn't. He had a mission and that he had to complete. He had to destroy those nine people Shanks was talking about. <sighs> I guess I will have to do what I need to do, said Naruto as well. It was weird, but true. He had to do what he needed to do, right? Soon uh, after uh, that, all that happened, uh, the whole team went to uh, the bridge to get uh, the bridge get, get and do going. But uh, Sasuke did stay back uh, in the house just in case uh, something happens. You know, since they are pretty aware that uh, Gato might send out. Uh, uh, thugs to go after Ineri and Tasunumi to get the leverage over uh, Tazuna. So when the thugs do come, Sasuke takes care of them with relative ease. In the bridge, Zabuza and Itachi start to fight, which do I even need to go over how one-sided this fight is? I mean, like, Itachi with his base shotting gun was able to put... Uh, Orochimaru down with relative ease even without using his mangekyo so I doubt that Zabuza would be any kind of threat to Itachi and well as for Naruto versus Haku let's just say that's a one-sided slaughter because as I already made clear in the previous uh before few minutes in this video only that Naruto is on a completely different different league of strength right he can use Divine Departure and whatnot, and Haku doesn't stand a chance. He gets his, you know, Ice Mirror and all that stuff, but it really doesn't work out. Naruto, with his fiery, fiery sword, just slices through all of them and this, you know, gets Haku with his immense speed that even Haku cannot keep up with. And soon, um, yeah, that happens. Because when Naruto, I mean, Naruto in the original was able to get through the Ice Dome. With his Nine Tails Chakra, this Naruto is much more stronger than that. So, obviously, um, it's obvious that Naruto would be able to defeat Haku. After all this happens, Zabuza um, is killed by Itachi. And uh, Haku uh, is killed by Naruto. Because they had the missions too. Uh, eventually, Gato does come to the... Um, bridge to you know kill God, uh, Zabuza since he thought Zabuza would get rid of this leaf ninjas but it, to his surprise the leaf ninjas got rid of Zabuza and Haku so in this case Naruto just steps up and knocks everyone out with his conqueror's Haki alone like do I need to even go over that like those are literally thugs they're barely getting level so yeah the conqueror's Haki alone is enough to knock them out naruto just leaves gato uh barely conscious as naruto just you know stoops down to his level and just uh, tells him that he will hand him over to the villagers and the villagers can do whatever the fuck they want with him as soon as that happens um the mission is pretty much over there's nothing much to go over as you know there's nothing much left honestly so yeah, uh, but this, the wave arc is concluded, they pretty much go back to the village. And Itachi signs his team up for the tuning exam, which I'll start covering in the next video. But yeah, uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. Share this video, video with many as friends as possible since we do want the channel to grow. And this, and get this video to 20 likes if you, want, if you guys want the next part of this video. So anyways, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.